We now are fortunate to have Jeff Seaton of uh, Orger Rotary Low Pumps uh, with us to talk about uh, some of the interesting products and applications that appear on his website. But before we do that, we did uh, interview him uh, a couple years ago, and we fortunately have his picture and, and so forth. So I'm going to pull up his picture, and I'm going to ask Jeff, would you just give us a little bit of your background, if you would? And by the way, you're, he's the one on the left, on, his, on our left-hand side, uh, the right-hand side of the picture there. Yeah, thanks, Bob. I'm Jeff Seaton, uh, National Sales Manager with Burger Rotary Low Pumps. I've uh, been with the company around four years. Um, in, in a sales manager position, was brought on board to kind of spearhead our industrial side and have rolled over to take care of uh, basically all markets and facets of the company um, involving sales. Uh, you know, have a extensive sales background. I've been in the pumping industry for 11 years, um, been both on the rep side of it and outside sales, and now on the manufacturing side uh, doing, you know, direct sales to OEMs, industrial accounts, municipals, and through our rep structure. So, been really good. Uh, Good working with Berger, and I'm excited to explain to you guys some of our products and things we got going on. Oh, that's great! So we're we're going to right to the website. It's you know it's Berger.com, so that's pretty easy to get to there. And then we'll uh, click on the products and uh, you know ask you to to lead us through some of the uh, features and so forth. Or for, for a very interesting uh, uh, group of applications you have for all this. Absolutely, love to. So if you could go over and click on our rotary low pump tab. Bob, I think we'll start with our, our core product group. It's up there at the top left. There you go. So obviously, you know, most most people um, that know us, I mean, that's that's our core business, the rotary load pump. We've been doing this business for about 35 years of constructing the pump, and we have other other uh, items that surround it, but it's still our core business, and it's still what we focus on day to day. Um, you can see basically an overview of the pump there on the on the screen if you're on our website, and uh, if you go down, you can see a basic picture of an inline configuration. This is kind of standard what you're going to see, and we'll get into some of the other configurations that we do as a company, some of the one-off stuff, and we can talk about that in more detail. But let's dive into the features of the pump. So if we go up, Bob, and we click on principles of the rotary load pump, obviously that's we cover a lot of everything here. That's great. Oh yes, nothing but the best for you, Bob. <laughs> Um, we do we do cover a lot of markets with our pump. I like to tell a lot of people that I talk to we cover you know everything from water to wood putty because this pump is very diverse. It's uh, it's it's very process oriented type piece of equipment. So the the applications that we get involved cover a, a broad array. So just kind of keep that in mind as we're talking you know and and people are thinking about different applications that it's it's worth talking about. Um, you can see that we have. Uh, clockwise and counterclockwise rotation because of the geometry of the pump and basically the way it's designed it's bi-directional so you can load and unload with the pump you can do you know in a tank farm type situation it has a lot of uh, usable type features so you can really limit the number of rotating pieces of equipment you'll have on your plant or, or you know in your respective application and uh, you can kind of see with with the animation how the products displace through the pump we are positive displacement so it's a timed it's a timed unit one to one ratio so we know exactly how much product we're moving with any given model range in our pump per revolution so it's really nice when you know we get into to process specific applications where the customer needs to have a pretty defined um, rate of of you know product move through the system we can help them with that so they, um, if we scroll I was going to say before we do that too, we're getting, we'll, hopefully you'll get into it later. But this reversible feature is very important when it comes to membrane permeating all these things, is it not? A absolutely. Uh, MBR, you know, applications are, are a very large market for us. And as you know, we, um, for those of you that are familiar with MBRs, I mean, as you pull the product through the MBR itself, you know, they watch the transmembrane pressure, the TMP across the membranes, and as that you know pressure builds, they'll actually bring the, the rotary low pump to a stop, reverse it, and basically back pulse through the membrane. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a unique feature that we offer, and it, it actually allows the membrane manufacturers to minimize piping, valving, and you know, additional rotating pieces of equipment um, and then their systems, making them more, more cost effective and more competitive. Yeah, so that's a really uh, strong feature. Absolutely. So if we go down to the advantages, we'll just kind of walk through this here step by step. And I will skip a few things, so feel free to visit our website and, you know, go through it in more detail. But here you can kind of see an exploded view of the pump. Um, some of the, the things that we really tout um, is block construction, um, 
basically what that means is our timing gear and our housing um, is, is one solid piece um, and then it's machined to the specific model um, so that we don't have a bolt together sandwich type design with our pump casing which is very very uh, unique um, there are a few other manufacturers that do it but it's a little more costly way to manufacture the pump but it gives us a more robust platform out in the field especially you get into some of these rugged industrial applications uh, compact construction obviously um, we can move a lot of products. We cover a flow range from 5 gallons a minute to 5,000 gallons a minute with this pump, and we can do it in a very small footprint. So that gives the customer a lot of flexibility. Um, you know, obviously, anytime we can make them more competitive and put it into a smaller pace or space or footprint, it saves them, you know, construction cost. Um, interior pump protection. Obviously, this is one of the things that we tout, and it'll kind of spin off in our MIP design that we'll get into a little later. Basically what that consists of is we can align the internal wet end of the, the pump, not only front to back, but radially. So the whole wet end is, is lined to protect from abrasives and, you know, a certain amount of corrosion attack and, and et cetera. So it's a really unique feature that we offer. Um, life cycle cost, obviously, when we get into some of the features of our rotors and the replaceable wear plates, we, you know, obviously we love to sell, you know, parts and equipment, but we want our customers to be happy in the long run. Um, and not, you know, be burdened by the operating cost of the unit. So with the removable lining system, you know, they never have to worry about replacing a piece of casting on the pump. Um, they can just replace sacrificial liners. Um, with some of our rotor technology, we offer the removable tips. So they get to reuse the core rotor body and just buy the tip itself from us to put back on the rotor body. And uh, it can be done very quickly in the field as well as our mechanical seal design. Our mechanical seal design incorporates our rotating and stationary portion of our mechanical seal can be reused. And the only thing you buy in a general uh, seal replacement is the seal faces and O-rings themselves. So there's been a lot of uh, engineering and time put into developing this product to be very maintenance friendly, um, very cost effective to operate over the life cycle of the pump. Um, you can see that kind of rolls off right into our MIP maintenance in place. So it's essentially exactly what it says, replacement of the wear parts and the blink of an eye um, by your service personnel, which, you know, in these times, everybody wants to do as much of their own service as possible to save money. Um, and it doesn't have to be removed from the piping system. It can be done right through the wet end of the pump. So it's a huge feature that we'll tout, you know, through and through if you talk to any of our sales guys. Um, pump housing, you know, we do a high quality uh, cast iron. We can do it in ductile iron, stainless steel, and duplex as well. So we can cover most of the applications out there with uh, the pump casing materials we offer. If you'd scroll on down for me, Bob, I'll finish going through the, the features here, kind of in our glossary of terms. If you could pull that on down. There you go. Um, you'll see there that we mentioned a quench, and the quench basically is the buffer chamber between the wet end of the pump and the actual timing gear itself. And we'll run, you know, a fluid in there to cool and uh, clean the mechanical seals themselves. So it's a very nice... Um, feature. We don't need an external freshwater flush. We can also integrate a flush system through this, this particular chamber if we need to, depending on the application. Um, but it also gives us a, it gives us that buffer and that, you know, the customer that, that reliability that he's not going to lose any product, especially in some of these processes where you're on the industrial side where they don't want to have any product fall on the floor. And, you know, they need to keep it contained. We can actually do that with the buffer chamber, um, aka the intermediate chamber. And, uh, and we can actually put some probes in there and detect moisture and different things. So that's one of the, the features we're really, you know, bringing to the customer. And we do uh, an open type stuffing box arrangement as well with our DPL line of pumps. So that's a double acting mechanical seal in lieu of the single acting that is our, our standard product. Um, quick release cover, you see that as a feature. We have four quick release eyelets that, that carry through our whole product range. So four quick release eyelets and you're automatically into the wet end of the pump. So it makes maintenance a breeze. Um, it also, you know, doing inspections on the rotors or wear plates, very simple for the, the maintenance personnel. So we kind of touched on this, you know, the rotary load pump itself, it's self-priming, it's valveless, positive displacement pump. Um, with our rotor configurations, we can also limit the, the pulsation that's, you know, in your process with a smooth flow pattern. And, uh, you know, we can get into that in more detail going on. But rotor materials, obviously, we'll show you some of the rotor options we have available um, on the next few slides. We can go on up, Bob, and we can, there you go, we can jump into some of the components. So we kind of went through this um, in a nutshell on the advantages of the rotary low pump. 
but if you look, we I'll just kind of walk you front to back. We have the quick release cover being number seven on the screen there. Um, obviously, we have the, the reversible front wear plate being number four. Uh, the number six number there you see is actually the rotors. And we have a lot of different rotor options that we can put in the particular pump. So we'll go into that once we get to the rotor page. But um, we offer a wide array of rotors and different elastomers and configurations to suit the customer's needs, which is very nice. You can see our mechanical seal arrangement being number five. Um, four covers our radial liners. I actually have two fours. It covers our radial liners and our rear wear plate. And then we have uh, actual wet end and the timing gear of the pump shown above. Um, so when you look at the pump overall, it's, it's very simplistic. Um, it's very robust, but yet it keeps a lot of the, the major components that most end users are looking for. They want a robust product, easy to work on, and it keeps their cost low to, to maintain. If we can jump into the maintenance in place there, that would be great, Bob. All right, so basically unrivaled maintenance-friendly uh, features. I mean, we, we really pride ourselves on the MIP design. You'll see it on any bit of our advertising materials that you might run across. Of. I mean, this is one thing that makes us unique. Um, it sets us apart, and it's one thing that our customers time and time again thank us for putting the engineering time into the product. But you can kind of see below. The, the pump's piped in, you remove the quick release cover, and you have instant access to the rotors themselves. Um, and you'll see in that third picture over, there's actually one of the removable tips that the customer's pulling. Um, the next picture shows a rotor out of the pump, um, and then you can see them removing the rotating portion of the mechanical seal and radial liner. So really, I mean, it's kind of a brief overview of the MIP, but it's it's very a very good representation of what the MIP is all about. I mean, you take the front cover off, and all those components are very easily taken out of the pump and rebuilt. Most of our pump offering, you know, depending whether you're doing a flow range from 5 gallons a minute to 5,000 gallons per minute, and anywhere from a half an hour to an hour, you can rebuild a complete wet end of the pump. And we really pride ourselves in that, and you can do that with one, you know, one individual, um, as opposed to some of the other technologies out there where you're going to need a hand to, to achieve that full rebuild. If we could jump into the specifications. So here's kind of a breakdown of the, the rotary low pump line for us. Um, and we really have spent some time and, and energy on the manufacturing side to be able to offer you know this wide array of sizes to our customers. There's six ranges, 18 styles from our AL to our XL range. Um, all embracing the MIP design and, and features that we carry through all of our product range. And uh, like I said, flow range from 5 gallons a minute to 5,000 gallons per minute. And you can see that we've made some serious invest in, investments on our side in you know, the timing gears for each model, um, the specific wet ends for each model. Because with the rotary low pump product, you know, the only way we can increase flow or pressure is we have to get longer or taller. Um, Berger's always taken the approach to get taller. It keeps our overhung loads on the shafts to a minimum so we have less shaft deflection and it allows us to basically keep the maintenance features of the pump much simpler for the customer because there's no end bearings or mechanical seals that they may have to, to deal with. Um, and you can kind of see a breakdown on our flow ranges there, Bob, as you, you scroll down right through our AL25 um, all the way up to our XL uh, 3530 there. Um, it takes you through the full gamut of, of pump ranges, which is, is excellent and it allows us to size a pump pretty much to your specific need or required speed. So here we're going to get into some of the configurations and keep in mind these are some of the more standard configurations we do and we'll do special one-off and skid builds for customers if they request them. Um, we'll engineer those in-house and uh, work with the customer to design a system but we'll run through these real quick. You can see our standard uh, helical geared motors so we call this our standard inline base frame. Um, this is our everyday bread and butter type business. Um, from there we go to a right angled gear reducer which we do a lot of the space is a real you know of concern or we have a tight area to squeeze this into in lieu of maybe going to an overhead unit like you'll see over on the right hand side we'll go to a uh, you know a right angle to try to, to avoid the belt and shift type setup um, so that's stuff that we'll work with the customer on. You can see down below we have a horizontal uh, pump with a hopper configuration so we can you know side mount the pump we'll just change some of the venting and porting and actually incorporate a hopper right onto the pump. Um, lifting frames so if you need anything custom if you have you know something down in a pit or you need any uh, you know special uh, means to remove the pump itself uh, we can help you with that. 
below there on the bottom right you can see there's a what we call a Titan um, drive basically it's an adjustable gear motor um, with a variable drive so the customer doesn't have to rely on a BFD you can physically do it by hand with the drive itself and then uh, if you scroll on down Bob we have a uh, pump and auger configuration there which is very popular especially with a lot of the biofuels and some of the other things going on in the marketplace we can actually integrate the auger which we manufacture in conjunction with our pump one of our grinders um, in, in a lot of different forms to actually form a process for the customer um, so that's something that we like to, to tout as well. Um, one of the very innovative companies with a rotary low pump, we do submersible. So we can do a submersible down a rail system like you know any of the other big uh, submersible manufacturers do. We can do that same principle with our rotary low pump. Electric drive, we could do it hydraulically driven. We can do, you can see there's an example of an extended drive shaft unit where we keep the motor out of the, the pumped media. So we have a lot of different options on the submersible side too. So if you get into really tough pumping application where suction lift's really not in the question, um, or you know priming's difficult, we'll actually submerge the pump. So that gives us some flexibility. Go a little farther down, Bob, you can see we have a truck mounted unit there. We do a lot of mobile applications, um, you know, where we'll do these truck mounted or something on the ag side. You can see there we have a, a little representation of a tractor with a PTO driven unit. These are very popular because it allows the customer to move, you know, anything from a water type product up to a thick viscous slurry, manures, um, you know, different, different applications out in the field. Whatever they may run across, they can utilize a piece of equipment they may have around their 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 plant or you know in their city or respective industry that they don't need another capital expenditure to drive that you can hook it right up and then we do mobile applications as well there's just a handheld mobile cart just a little representation of some of what we do you know in the wine industry they do a lot of mobile units that we're very uh, involved in and then we do the larger full scale you know gas or diesel driven units with sound attenuation and things of that nature down below as well so quite an array of configurations we can offer the customer and like I said we're willing to do one-off stuff here in our in our Minneapolis facility we'll work with engineering and design it and build it here so I would imagine for the shale gas uh, where all this stuff is mobile you're moving from site to site and things all all the time there is uh, a lot of a lot of mobility whether they want them you know mobile like on a wheeled setup or on kind of a housekeeping you know platform that's skid mounted where they can basically set it down and you know hook everything up power and your your, your piping and go I mean it's, it's very important to a lot of these customers that we offer them the flexibility or design the frames for the rugged you know duty they're trying to put it through and the multiple moves that might incur yeah I mean something like the shale gas you're going from well to well with uh, just a few days in between so exactly exactly yeah. Uh, how rotor rotor designs is that the next one on the list here? That's then? the next one, Bob. Let's jump into rotor designs. Um, I don't think anybody in the marketplace is going to argue we offer quite an array of rotors, um, and we really pride ourselves in that, that that we can, you know, pretty much put a pump in the field and offer numerous rotor designs if needed, um, which really actually helps the end user if they have a difficult pumping application. You know, you're not tied to one rotor. We have different configurations, different elastomers. Um, different material configurations on the metal side, whether we do stainless steel, steel, or you know some of the other materials that we work with. So you can see we have the optimum rotor with a really long ceiling line. So that that rotor almost it's it, the the ceiling line so long it's great for you know high suction lift applications. Or if we have a lot of grit, we can actually keep the grit on the leading edge of that rotor in lieu of allowing it to get between the rotor itself and the pump casing. So you'll see us throw that rotor at a lot of real special one-off applications. Um, we have our premium rotor, which will come in steel or stainless steel, so it's kind of your traditional. It's got a little incorporation of your traditional dual lobe, but uh, some of the features of our optimum with its profile. Uh, we still offer the tried and true dual lobe linear rotor in both metal or um, elastomer coated. Um, and a lot of people ask, why would you want an all elastomer coated rotor? Well, if you're pumping a product that's caustic or you know very aggressive, we can actually. Um, coat that you know in a specific material whether it be EPM, Viton, you know, Buno, whatever type of, of you know material we need to use for your specific uh, application we can coat that whole rotor and with our non-wetted shaft feature that we tout I mean none of that product ever touches any of the, the real steel parts of the pump except for the liners themselves so it's kind of a unique feature. If you scroll down a little bit more Bob on this page one of our more unique rotors and kind of the highest in demand rotor is our, our rotor with removable tip. And you'll see down there on the bottom left hand corner um, the tri-lobe screw rotor and the tri-lobe linear rotor with removable tips. So this is a patented feature that we offer. 
And essentially what that does is allows the customer to reuse that metal core time and time again. Um, and the only expenditure he has if he would damage a rotor or need to do a full rebuild down the road, he, all he has to do is buy those replaceable tips. They can be pulled off very simply and drove back on with a, you know, a lot of times pushed on or drove back on with a simple dead blow hammer, tighten the bolt down, and you're off and running. So it's very maintenance friendly. Um, and the customers that have this technology love it. Now, we offer the removable tip on our model range from the CL model on up. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, but we still have many different rotor options for our, our AL and PL pumps as well. Um, and then you can see we do a PTF uh, e-rotor as well for you know a lot of the chemical industry. We'll be showing at the chem show out in New York and stuff too. So I mean that's another market that we cater to. And this just goes through into some of our materials of construction in a nutshell. Um, you can see we do the cast iron, uh, we do ductile iron, we do stainless steel, um, and all those are available in our pump casings. Uh, we do our liners in you know carbon steel or stainless steel, and we're developing some new new plates that are you know silicon carbide coated. We also have uh, some long life plates is what we're calling that's something new rolling out uh, and I'm sure there'll be some discussion at WEFTEC and some other venues with those long life plates. Pretty pretty new product coming out so we're going to have some more to talk about as we get that rolled out in full. Um, and then from there you can see some of the rotor configurations we use, you know, the SBR, the MBR, EPDM, FPM, CSM, um, we do the PTFE, um, and we still have the steel and stainless steel available for the solid rotors if needed. Um, so we have a wide range of elastomers that we work with, not only on our rotor selection, but also our O-rings that are used in the pumps as well. Um, and then shaft sealing, you know, our standard, especially in the, the water, wastewater industry, we use a Duranite. It's a lap cast iron seal. It's very robust. It holds up well. Um, and it's a little forgiving for the customer. You know, it's not, it doesn't tend to be as brittle as silicon carbide and brake. You know, so if you're trying to do this maintenance yourself and, and you're always concerned about breaking the silicon carbide seal, that Duranite's a nice option. We do offer the silicon carbide um, in both uh, uh, our single acting uh, seal arrangements and then on our double acting we can do silicon carbide or tungsten carbide as well. So and then we still offer the tried and true, you know, packing glands so we can do packing and we also have a, a multi a multi seal which is basically a triple triple lip seal that we can do which is nice in the latexes and different things where you might have some coagulating type product. And this will just kind of go into some of our applications, and this is a 10,000 foot view, obviously, of the applications we cover. Um, you can see that, you know, we cover industrial applications, and that's a wide array of industrial applications that the pump can be used in. Um, you know, obviously we've got WEFTEC coming up. We're getting geared up for that. Wastewater treatment is a huge market for us. Um, it's been very good to us, and we have a good fit for that marketplace, covering a lot of different applications. Um, if you scroll down a little bit more, Bob. Chemical industry, obviously we kind of touched on that. We do the chem show, so we do a lot of uh, applications in the chemical industry. You can see the oil can below. The oil industry is very big to us, moving a lot of different, you know, whether it be crude right down to drilling muds and cuttings and different things. Um, we're very involved and, and active in the oil markets and recycling. Um, you know, we obviously not only manufacture the pump, but we have some different grinding equipment we'll get into here in a minute. Uh, the marine industry, we do a lot in, in the marine industry as far as, you know, bilge and ballast pumps. We do lube pumps, um, you know, oil rigs, a lot of different different facets there that we can get involved in on an international scale, as well as the mobile pumps, which we kind of touched on. And you can see there's one um, kind of a pretty good example of a unit we built. So. so that kind of takes us through the rotary low pump. Um, obviously, you know, we... We have our North American headquarters right here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, soon to be moving to Chanhazen, Minnesota, so we'll roll that out to all the public, but uh, once we get that, that move done here in the next month. But we're really excited. We stock all these, these pumps here in Minneapolis with the, the supporting parts and staff to take care of the customers. So day in and day out, I mean, we're out there actively pursuing any rotary low pump application willing to help the customer do some one-off engineering and, and really bring the service side of things to, to the customer's needs. I think it's suiting we jump into the multi-crusher. It's right below the, the rotary low pump there on the left-hand side, Bob. So the multi-crusher itself, you can see kind of the basic platform of it. It's very similar to our pump. I mean, it still utilizes the same castings, 
Um, our timing gear changes a little bit with the with the grinder. Obviously, we don't have a one to one ratio, or we wouldn't be able to pull the product into the unit. But we utilize a lot of the same features, a lot of the same parts. So a customer, you know, especially on the water and wastewater side of things, where they're doing not only pumping, but they may have a grinder or grinders in their facility, we can actually utilize our pump and grinder systems together and have a lot of the same similar spare parts, which keeps the amount of shelf spares to a minimum. A lot of customers like that. Plus, they get to know to work working on our you know particular pump or grinding equipment to, to work on the, the other side of it. It's not that difficult to have a basic understanding. So it still utilizes the quick release eyelets. Um, you're right into to the you know wet end of the unit and you and we put grinding blades in. So we can go into the, the details of that here on the, the next slide. But that's kind of an overview. So let's jump into the principles of the, the multi crusher Bob. So we got some more animation to keep you keep you everything lively today. So you can see basically in lieu of going on the outside with the pump with the multi crusher will bring the product right through the center of the unit. Um, with the multi crusher it's not it's not bi-directional obviously because the blades have a direction of orientation but we can with changing the blades which you can do right out in the field you can dictate the whether you want to do a counterclockwise or a clockwise rotation and the, the end user in the field can determine that. So that's a nice feature. Jump down to the advantages, Bob. So you can see kind of a platform, and the advantages of the multi crusher. I mean, it has the same unique features and embraces the Burger MIP design. So everything can be maintenance through the front cover. Um, our blade design uses a blade spacer. It's a stacked configuration, so the customer can pull them out if you would break a blade or you know have want to change your configuration of your blade, you can do that right in the field. There's no need to pull out a cartridge, send it in, or you know, stock a cartridge on yourself. We we allow you to get in there and, and change that configuration or work on the, the unit very easily. Um, and you know, with uh, with the adjustments made to the timing gear, you know, it has a pull in function on the unit. So it it basically wants to pull and shred that uh, you know particular product, whatever it may be that we're pulling in the unit uh, into into the grinding blades. And one of the unique features we offer with this grinder in lieu of some of the other grinder manufacturers out there, um, we don't have a set gear ratio. Uh, most manufacturers, you know, they might have like a 29 to 1 gear ratio. With our unit, we incorporate a standard gear reducer, so we could run anywhere from, you know, 50 to 500 RPM with our unit, depending on your application and, you know, what we're trying to process. So that gives us a little bit of an advantage in some arenas to have that flexibility to control speed. So you can see down here, I mean, we're covering some of this kind of somewhat redundant off of the pump, but, you know, twin shaft grinder, um, you have direct access to all the fluid wetted parts for maintenance and, you know, removing any foreign debris that may be stuck in the system that won't pass. So that's another nice feature. You can get into it very rapidly. Um, our MIP design still embraces. Everything can be pulled through the front cover right down on the mechanical seals and, and replaced. Um, we have a wide variety of blood or, or uh, blade and cutter uh, combinations, and we'll show you those that, that we utilize uh, most readily here in a few more slides. Um, and then we have the separation of the master and the geared motor, which we kind of talked about. It allows us to do different, you know, speeds and different drive configurations, which is very important as well. So, and we kind of touched on it when we looked at the different configurations of the pump, but we'll put this unit in conjunction with a pump, with our auger. Um, we might use multiple pieces to, uh, to basically form a process with this unit. Um, if you want to just buzz through the maintenance side of it there real quick, Bob, over on the, the left-hand side. So here you can kind of see it's right back to the MIP. Everything's replaceable, and it gives you a good kind of example of how the you pull the front cover off, and then it's just a blade spacer, blade spacer configuration alternating. Um, so it allows the customer to really maintain his own unit. He can stock a few blades, you know, to keep himself up and running. Uh, or if you break a blade, you can replace just one blade in lieu of the whole blade set or cartridge set. So it'll, you know, minimize your downtime, it lowers your maintenance costs, and it reduces, once again, your overall operating expense. So it's, it's stuff that we're very proud to bring out to, to the marketplace. You want to hit specifications there, Bob? So here you can see where we offer, we can do the grinder um, pretty much to any product range we have on the pumping side because it works off the same platform as the pump, but our standard is our H AL, HPL, HCL, HFL, and HALA. Um, 
or HLA, excuse me. Those are our main units that you know we will stock on our shelf, and we don't consider them a custom unit. It covers a flow range from 66 gallons a minute up to 1,364. But like I said, I mean we will customize um, and produce the unit all the way from our from our system at five gallons a minute all the way up to the 5,000 gallons per minute is available. Um, just not always stocked on our shelf. Options of construction. So here's just kind of some basic uh, renditions of different things we do. You know, you have the, the grinder going into a hopper, into the pump, um, you know, on that first one. So that's, we call this unit the multi-crusher. Um, and that incorporates, you know, our crusher, our auger, our pump. So, I mean, it really allows us to pull stuff full facet. Um, we have the side mount with the hopper again and then going into the low pump. Um, we have the grinder itself um, a little farther down. As you can see, if you scroll down a little bit, there you go, Bob. And then we can side mount the unit as well, so we can get very creative with this this grinder. You know how we arrange it, whether we side mount, it, we go vertical, we go horizontal, whatever we need to do. It's just a venting change for us. The the grinder is is very flexible that way. Um, and then you can see we have an auger or the multi crusher pump combination. Um, so we just flange them together. It's a very nice feature. And then we have the auger grinder pump combination, which we, we utilize a lot, especially in different, uh, you know, in the biogas arena, different organic maceration and things of that nature. And that bottom picture on the left, you can see we incorporate a stone catcher or, or a rock drop out of sorts. And we have the grinder and the, the pumping unit. And it just gives us a little more protection for the two units. Um, I should touch generally on the multi-crusher will, you know, need some sort of protection device, obviously the grinder, and we generally do that with a controlling device with automatic reversing function. So if we sense a jam, we'll try to clear the grinder, um, you know, and we can, you know, determine how many times it tries to clear itself and how long it tries to clear itself before, um, you know, we, we would go into a fault or trip out mode and say, you know, hey, we can't pass this particular solid. So we'll incorporate all those, those safety devices when we work with the customer depending on their needs. Um, but uh, more or less just to hit on that. Here you can see a few of our blade configurations we have. Um, and obviously we can, can customize this. Um, but we offer nine blade cutter combinations to be chosen from um, for the particular customer. And we can, you know, intermix these blades that you see here. We can go with the same style blade. And then how we orientate them in the grinder also dictate the output of the particular product as well. So... And then it will go through the applications again. Um, you know, obviously there, that first picture you see, this is basically a tar lagoon where we have a pump and grinder hydraulically driven on a special frame we built to, to go down into that particular product. Um, it's, it's a very unique setup. Um, the hydraulics give you a lot of flexibility, um, you know, on control. And then you can see that we just short flange them together and it's able to, to grind the product up before it's pumped out. Um, any tar balls or anything like that that needs to be reduced, we can handle right in the get-go. Uh, wastewater treatment plants, we'll you know, utilize them in that scenario, whether we're protecting our piece of equipment or other pieces of pumping equipment downstream. Um, we're not picky that way. We, we will do either or. Um, you can see there we have a raw sewage application shown. Um, with, with the grinder, we actually have a right angle drive on there with a, with a rock dropout or a stone catcher um, attached to the inlet side. And then as you go down, we have a food waste application there where we actually side mount the grinder under a unique uh, conical hopper. Basically, uh, it's very unique. And we'll customize all those flanging solutions for you, uh, specific, you know, base frames themselves and flanges, whatever we need to mate up to your specific application. And then we got a plastic recycling application where we've just basically paired up a pump and grinder combination there, which is one of the more common things to do with the units out in the field. And then we got a solid fruit and vegetable waste system down below where we're, we're incorporating a, an auger grinder scenario. Um, and then below that we have the, the slaughterhouse waste. So this actually incorporates a hopper, side mounted a grinder, and then a pump down below to convey the product. Um, and they threw in cruise ships to process different waste and stuff. So it's a pretty unique, flexible product. Um, that we utilize in a lot of different applications and uh, our customers keep coming up with some unique ones to, to utilize it as well. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of interesting uh, applications uh, for this as well. We're coming mm -hmm. down to the end of the allotted time. 
So okay. I think this has been very good coverage of both these products. Absolutely. Uh, we mu- go ahead. Um, can I just just briefly touch on the multi chopper quick? Bob? Sure, sure. We can uh, so we can definitely squeeze that in. Let's go back. And- yeah, I won't elaborate on too much. I just want to show uh, the the customers real quick what's available out there. This is our other sure uh, major piece of grinding equipment. We can just pretty much show it um, very quickly. This is what we call our multi chopper. Um, and this unit is a single shaft grinder so we actually have three rotating knives with a stationary plate that we utilize on this this unit is very heavily used in the municipal industry that's why i didn't want to skirt over i kind of got right absolutely up, up, let's, uh, up let's, uh, so. let's spend a little time on it sure so this this unit is great for dealing with long string material um you know rope like material in a wastewater treatment plant where hair tends to to, to rope depending on on the application but we utilize this very frequently it's a very simplistic unit um, let's just drive right, dive right into the principles of the unit, and, and we'll give them a better idea how this thing operates here. So the unit itself, this is a good diagram. If you're looking from above on the unit, basically the flanges are divided, and you can orientate the flange to, to dictate your suction and discharge. But large, the large arrows dictate your incoming product, so it comes in basically there on the left-hand side. It's forced past those three rotating knives, um, and then past slash through the stationary plate. So that plate is available in different configurations that will determine the, the throughput size of your product. So essentially we've got a very tight shearing action that's occurring there. Um, and we can run this unit at multiple speeds too, depending on your application, your product, your throughput. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll work with the end user. But as it's passed, passed the rotating knives and stationary plate, it comes out in a reduced form. Um, and you can see you know, it's bi-directional as well, so it's very flexible out in the field. If you want to jump right into advantages on this uh, unit, Bob, to save some time here. So basically, the multi-chopper incorpor- incorporates uh, you know, a lot of different features. It has a knife tension, which we have both manual and what we call an MCA, a mechanical cut adjustment that we can incorporate in there. Um, so it'll take care of, you know, whether you want to adjust it or whether you want it to do it itself, we'll determine that on the sales side. But it, it's very maintenance friendly. Um, it's a very flexible use machine. It has low uh, losses through the unit, which is nice. You know, the multi crusher has a little more losses real, realized across the, the particular grinding unit, where we can do a lot higher flow range um, with the multi chopper. And everything still incorporates the you know MIP design. It's still quick release eyelets on the front cover. The, the rotating knives can be pulled out of the front cover. The stationary cutter plate can come out. Um, so we still embrace all that, and we even incorporate a rock dropout in this unit too. So if you do have heavies, you know, rocks and different foreign debris coming into the system, it's incorporated right there at the bottom of the unit. Four quick release eyelets. There's a clean out there. So if you incorporate a couple of valves. Um, and we can do a clean out so you have a water port right at the bottom. It's very simple for the maintenance personnel to clean that unit out every once in a while. If you scroll on down, Bob, basically kind of just goes into a little bit broader overview um, that we went through. So feel free to, to read through this in more detail on the website if people want to learn a little more about the, the multi chopper. So if we Got go it, up, I just like, what's that? Sure, go ahead. Uh, I would like to just show the different cutter plates. So if we could go into, go up and go into the, uh, actually over there on the side of the components. I think it's under the components. It might be under the cutter plate section there, but you can kind of see how it's removed there. Front cover, rotating knives, and stationary wear plate. So it all comes through the front cover, embraces the MIP design. Uh, minimal tools are required to get this done. And, uh, you know, it basically, uh, works very well and it's a very easy simplistic unit for the operators to, to maintain. So did you want to click on the cutter plate itself down Yeah, there? let's click on the let's click on click on the cutter plate real quick, Bob. Sure. So you can see here's some of the basic designs. Um, you know, obviously we're we're kind of moving through this fast and at a ten thousand foot view, but if you know feel free to to reach out to us if you want more details on this. But you can see we have specific cutter plates um, with specific patterns on them. Some of the pattern uh, is dictated by um, you know the product we're trying to reduce and the size, but also you see the the pattern that's kind of helter skelter and all over the place. The reason we do that is it doesn't get a wear groove onto your actual rotating cutting knives. Um, it, it wears the knives very evenly with the, the patterns that we you know engineered into these plates. 
So we get that question a lot from our customers. And with the different orientation and sizing the hole, we actually create you know shearing points on the plates themselves. But you can see as you scroll down, they keep getting finer depending on your application and what your what your process demands for a final output of of product size. So that's it's one of the unique grinders that you'll see uh, shown at the the WebTech as well. And we will have all this equipment available um, for people to see at the numerous shows that we do throughout the year as well as WebTech. And relative to WebTech now, uh, Jeff, will you be there? Yes, I will be. Uh, I will be at WebTech this year. Um, we're looking forward to uh, to a great showing, and uh, hopefully, we can get a a large turnout uh, from all of our all of our customer base and go through some of these equipment options in more detail. Um, now, will you have uh, some of these pumps on display there? What 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 will, what will your exhibit consist of there at WebTech? Um, we're going to have uh, pretty much the full gamut of the, the basic uh, rotary low pumps on display um, at WefTech, so we will be able to uh, go through that with the customers. Um, basically, we will have the multi-chopper, we will have the multi-crusher, as well as uh, we will have um, our rotor rake, which is another grinder we didn't get into today, um, just due to the time constraints. but. We have a lot of different options that we can throw at them, um, you know, in the fields uh, and at WebTech to show them what uh, Burger's made of as a company and the different product ranges. Uh, so, yeah, it would be a great venue for us to, to show them all the options. Well, Jeff, you've done a very good job of explaining everything on the site. And, of course, as uh, people can be visiting you next week, and if they don't get a chance to do that, uh, they can look for more on the, the Burger.com site. And talk to you uh, uh, and your people personally. So I'd like to thank you for a very interesting interview, and you're a real professional at it, and we look forward to doing some more with you. All right. I appreciate the opportunity, Bob, and I uh, look forward to doing some more. Thanks a lot. Bye now. All right. Take care. Bye.